But, yeah. So, then in the 80s, there were a whole bunch of art, um, writers' changes and shifts and stuff. Um, and there were a bunch of different things that happened that are just kind of like little pinpoints in his story. Um, there's a line of uh, the comic where Steve actually considers running for president. Um, and he has another love interest introduced, Bernie Rosenthal, um, and the origin story is revisited, kind of fleshed out a bit more, um, Red Skull's story is fleshed out some more and it's revealed, um, and during that time, Captain America and Nomad, um, Jack Monroe, um, I told you that he would come in later, um, <coughs> But they uh, team up, and they uh, fight crime together for a little while. Um, and also around this time, um, the heroes gathered by the Beyonder, they elect Steve as um, their leader. Um, Steve's always pretty much a good choice for a leader of a team. Um, he's got the ta tactical abilities and all that stuff. He's, he's your go-to guy, which is why... He gets around team-wise. It's because he's so good. He's good. <laughs> um, also during this time, um, there are a bunch more um, uh, foes introduced. Like Crossbones, Serpent Society, and another love interest, Diamondback. Um, Super Patriot, and um, Short, like, that. he's... Uh, kind of becomes a partner, surrogate, Captain America type deal, um, that happens. Um, then you have, um, during this time, a lot of social and political themes are kind of discussed, um, like extreme ide uh, ide <laughs> idealism, um, apparently that's a hard word for me to say. Um, and that's what happens when um, Captain America fights uh, the anti-nationalist terrorist Flag Smasher. Um, kind of struggles with that issue uh, of the time. Um, vigilantism, when he hunts the murderous scourge of the underworld. Um, and then he also deals with homophobia. Um, when he runs into a childhood friend of his who actually is gay. Um, so, yeah, it kind of uh, touches on and um, fleshes out and analyzes uh, certain political and social constructs of the time, which is pretty much par for the course with these comics. Um, then, um, after that, um, he his government commission with the U.S. Army is still in effect, even though he was on ice and presumed dead. Um, but he still has to work for the government, and he's really troubled by that. He really doesn't like it. Um, so he chooses to resign his identity, um, and he takes the alias of The Captain. Once again, our baby boy is really creative. Um, and John Walker comes in and is a replacement Captain America, but he has so much pressure to be like Steve that it's just too much and he goes insane. Um, because, yeah, I don't know how our boy does it. He should be insane by this point. But, um, after that there's this, like, story plot, um, with the serum that's really odd and kind of weird, but it's worth noting. Um, he avoids an explosion from a methamphetamine lab, um, but the drug triggers a chemical reaction in the super soldier serum. Um, and he ends up having to have the serum removed from his body and train trains to keep up his physique and to be able to keep fighting crime and stuff. Um, it's later revealed that the serum's not exactly like a like a drug per se, because I mean it should have metabolized um, in his body by that point. But it was rather more of like a virus, which which actually changes uh, his biochemistry, um, and it also causes his genetics to change too. Um, 
this is also explained with um, Red Skull how um, he at the time he was inhabiting a body um, cloned from some of Roger's cells. Um, he, so he also has the formula in his body. Um, that is important with Arnim Zola. Arnim Zola is a um, biochemical um, engineer, basically, on crack, because he does all these crazy, super cool experience, experiments and totally wish it was awesome. Like, sorry, not awesome because it is awesome, but totally wish it was real because if I could clone Chris Evans' body and live in that thing, hell yeah, I would do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're getting crazy here. <laughs> so that's kind of like explained that kind of wise because um, with his altered biochemistry, he starts to deteriorate and they end up having to take um, cells from Red Skull to create an antidote to give to Steve so that he don't doesn't like deteriorate too much and to return this and stabilize the super soldier serum in his body and it's crazy. It is so crazy, but it's comic logic, so it makes perfect sense. Um this will be um challenged in its craziness when we get to the extremist virus with Iron Man next week. Um, <laughs> but also at this point um, the writers decided that it was time to bring back Sharon Carter, and she is brought back as Cap's love interest. So they get all kissy face again, and then there's more villains, and that's the 90s. <laughs> then starting in the 2000s, um, especially after the September 11th attacks um, on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, um, it really struggles with a lot of these um, issues that are happening currently um, in America and stuff with the Captain America, com Amer Captain America comics. Um, in the aftermath, Rogers reveals his identity. Um, he reveals his secret identity to the world and he takes up residence in Brooklyn um, in Red Hooks, um, which is a na little neighborhood of it. Um, following the disbandment of the Avengers and Avengers Disassembled, that's a story arc, it's yeah, but anyway, so once the Avengers disassemble, okay, um, Steve gets hired on and is employed by S.H.I.E.L.D., um, and while he's actually a uh, part of S.H.I.E.L.D., he discovers that Bucky is actually alive. Um, he was saved and deployed by the Soviets as Winter Soldier, um, which is basically uh, the assassin's program that trained Natasha, um, Natasha Romanov, Black Widow, week seven. I can't wait. It's gonna be so awesome. Um, but yeah, he um, is injected with a f sort of form of the Super Soldier Serum. Um, I think it's closer actually to the Infinity Formula, which is what Nick Fury is injected in, injected with. Um, but anyway, it keeps him young. Um, the Soviets use him as a assassin. And, yeah, um, then we enter into the Civil War star story arc. Um, I don't want to talk about it until week 13 because I have to keep myself composed. Otherwise, this is not going to be pretty. Um, so basically what we're going to say is that Steve was on the anti-registration side of it. Um, he becomes an underground criminal. It's more of a vigilante role. Um, he ends up surrendering. Um, he's indicted on criminal charges, um, and then he is assassinated by, get this, his pookie, Sharon Carter, who has been hypnotized by, um, Crossbones and Dr. Faustus and Red Skull and all these things, but anyway, she shoots him. He is presumed dead, they bury him, um, it is said that he's buried in Arlington, but the Avengers actually take his body up north and return him to the Arctic where they found him. Um, at which point Namor um, basically says, yeah, I'll keep an eye on him. Um, I'll watch over him and stuff. But um, later after that, a letter to Tony Stark um, from Rogers is actually read and 
Rogers in that letter says that he wants Bucky to be the new Captain America and Bucky of course takes the title and they revamp his costume and incorporates like a pistol and a knife and all these different things um, but he is Captain America and later on it's revealed that Steve didn't actually die um, that the gun that Sharon Carter um, used actually displaced him in time and space so he would end up revisiting battles and such and fighting in them um, from his previous timeline. Um, so unlike in Doctor Who where you can't cross timelines, you can't move backwards in your own timeline, apparently you can in comics because comic logic! Um, I need a new gift. Comic logic. Uh, but, um, once Steve is actually able to come back and re-enter his body fully, um, he kind of formally gives Bucky his shield and says, you're Captain America now, not me, you. And so Bucky continues on, he's Captain America, and the president, of course, gives Rogers a full pardon because, I mean, you gotta give it to him. I mean, Captain fucking America. <laughs> you gotta have to. <laughs> um, so then, after that, um, the president ends up appointing Rogers as the head of the nation's security, replacing Norman Osborn, that dick, um, which we'll get to later. I promise. Everything's gonna come back together. It's gonna make sense. I promise. Um, the Superhuman Registration Act is repealed. Rogers reestablishes the Avengers, um, which is headed up by Iron Man, Thor, and Bucky as Captain America, okay? Um, so it is Captain America, but it's Bucky, not Steve. Um, but during this time, he's approached by Jacob Erskine, who is the grandson of Dr. Erskine, um, the one who created the Super Soldier Serum, um, and th he is kind of brought into this secret um, black ops superhero team known as the Secret Avengers. Um, so basically it's an underground version of the Avengers. Because it makes perfect sense! <laughs> um, then, apparently, Bucky seems to die, um, and so Steve has to take back the Captain America. Um, he dons the calf, cap and he becomes Captain America again. Um, and they end up forming a militia to co go against this um, group called the Scotty. S-K-A-D-I. Um, I don't know about pronunciations. I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying my best. But it's crazy. The pronunciations in comics is just crazy. So, um, essentially, in the battle, um, Captain America... His shield is broken in half. Um, Captain America uses Thor's hammer to defeat the leader, and then Thor kills the leader. It's really crazy. I don't understand it, but I'm trying to tell you guys. That's what happens. Then, after the battle, Iron Man presents Captain America with his shield again, which has been um, reforged, kind of. Um, it's kind of put back together, like... Um, the sword that Aragorn fights and defeats uh, the armies of Sauron. Sorry, I'm a Lord of the Rings fan. I can't help it. So anyway, um, Iron Man presents Captain America with his uh, reconnected shield, um, but it bears a scar um, through it where it was broken. But it actually is stronger than ever. Um, now. Because Captain America, because Steve has taken out the Captain America name again because he thinks Bucky is dead, um, it's later revealed that he's actually not dead because nobody actually dies in comic books. Remember that. If you think someone's dead in a comic book, I promise you they're not. Wait about four issues and they're going to come back to life. I promise. <laughs> you have the Becca guarantee that they are going to come back to life eventually. Um, but, uh, at this point, Bucky kind of takes up the mantle of Winter Soldier again, and that's why he's no longer Captain America. Um, 
And there we have it. We are actually completely up to date with the story of Captain America. Um, Steve Rogers, basically. Um, because there's too many Captain Americas to count. Um, so, that is the end of our lecture. Like, the actual lecture lecture. Um, what I want you guys to do for your responses, I would like you guys to analyze um, and kind of make a comment on the fact that Steve is the world's first superhero and kind of um, how he sets the bar for superheroes um, with his sheer awesomeness and his gigantic heart because he's a big sweetie pie. Um, he can be a dick too, but he's just a big sweetie pie and sweetheart and I love him. Um, so basically, um, talk about um, the significance of Steve Rogers being the first superhero, the world's first superhero, at least in the Marvel Comics universe. So, that is it. So, this is me, Becca, signing off.